Hi guys, I'm Danya and I'm a first year history student at Oriel College, as you can see through my shirt. I think what I really appreciate about doing a history degree is the vast extent of time periods and geographic regions that we have the opportunity to cover. We have a requirement which is to look at um, at least one medieval module, one early modern module and one proper modern module, which is like the 17th, 18th century onwards. Uh, and I think the history degree is one of the most flexible undergraduate degrees at Oxford because we have the opportunity to customise and specialise in whatever we find interesting, even within those modules itself. And historians also have the least number of contact hours in a week, which is at most one or two tutorials a week and two lectures a week. So I chose Oriel mainly because I wanted a centrally located college. Um, so it's right in the middle of the city on High Street. Um, it also offers accommodation for all your undergraduate years and also accommodation for postgrad students as well, which not all colleges offer. Um, and also like because of the facilities, they had a gym, a 24 hour library and the activities they had, like their own drama club, their own student newspaper, which I'm also involved in and things like that. And also wanted a small college in which Oriel is relatively smaller than other colleges that I've seen. So for me, I had to sit for the history aptitude test, um, the HAT, and how I prepared for it was I think about one or two months before the actual exam, I started doing past year papers on a weekly basis, sometimes even twice or three times a week, just really rigorously analysing the sources. The way the HAT is structured is that they give you an extract from a historical document and you're meant to analyse it, just write an essay on what you think about it. Um, so I did that, like I constantly practiced analysing those sources and I had my history teachers at my school mark my answers and I discussed it with them, which I think was a very effective way to learn. My interview experience was very interesting. I flew to the UK um, to go for the interview. and. Um, so initially I actually applied for history and politics, so I had only one interview for each. And my history interview, I genuinely had like an instinct that it went well because I just really enjoyed um, the discussion with the tutors during the interview. So what they did was they gave me a historical excerpt that was about like um, 13 pages long. I had an hour to read it and properly analyse it. And when I went into the interview, they asked me what I thought of it. So we mainly discussed um, the document and it was just a very engaging um, discussion. But for my politics interview, on the other hand, um, um, they gave me like graphs to analyse and I struggled analysing it. And the vibe I got from each interview was very different because while I really enjoyed my history interview, the politics one went a bit eh. And it has been shown I got offered a place for history only instead of history and politics but I'm genuinely happy because like I feel like I wouldn't have been able to cope uh, if I did a joint honours degree. I think tutorials are by far the most rewarding thing um, I find about doing an Oxford degree because it gives you the opportunity to sit down with somebody who's an expert in that topic and just discuss and ask as many questions as you want. It's just a very, just intellectually vibing with the tutors. Um, so for me, um, the way the history degree works is that they give us an essay each week with like a really long reading list and we're meant to write at least 2,000 words for each essay. So you come into the tutorial um, having written the essay and then you discuss mainly the topic, like on what you've read about and what uh, your arguments were in the essay and whatnot. Um, for my first term, both I did two modules and both my tutorials were one to one and so it really gave me like a very personalized experience. I didn't feel like I was competing with anyone. I didn't feel insecure because like you know my batchmates didn't couldn't hear what I was saying. It was just me and the tutor and the tutor like you know the tutors are not judgmental. They're very understanding and they're there to support your academic needs and interests. Um, and in my second term, I had a tutorial partner for one of my modules and my other module, uh, it was also one-to-one. -one. I think having a tutorial partner and having your tutorials alone are both like equally advantages in different ways because when you have a tutorial partner, um, you get to bounce off each other's ideas or when you don't know what to say, your tutorial partner can sometimes answer the question for you and you can just like rely on them to like save you in the tutorial. Um, but obviously, like it's 
uh, and you get to discuss the questions together before the tutorial takes place. Whereas when I had my tutorials alone, like I literally had nobody else to ask because I was the only person in my college, um, in my year, who was doing that module. So it was a very like struggling to figure th everything out on my own kind of thing. But when I had a tutorial partner, we were sort of like struggling together and learning together from the whole experience. In terms of work-life balance, uh, I can only speak for a history student, but I think uh, because historians have the least number of contact hours, we can plan our days accordingly to do whatever we want. So sometimes I get up really late at like 10, 11 a.m. Um, most of my work is done in the library and I usually get my uh, essays finished the night before the tutorial and when I'm not in the library, I'm literally free to do whatever I want uh, and I, since I only have about two lectures and two, two tutorials a week the rest of my week is completely up to me how I want to handle it so I think if you have good time management skills you can genuinely find like a very suitable work-life balance So in terms of like um, welfare support and mental health, I do feel like I've had a positive experience. But again, I can't speak for everyone. This is just what I have gone through, um, especially in the previous term where I had like physical pain as well. My tutors have been really understanding and supportive. Like they we are able to like reschedule our tutorials too and it fits me better. Um, they can give me extensions wherever I'm not feeling well. I have access to the counselling service, which I think has been pretty useful as well. And overall, my college and the tutors at my college um, have been very understanding of situations in which I'm not able to cope, which does happen sometimes. And I think as long as you speak out to the right sources, um, they will be willing to listen to you. And that's what's most important, is that if you are struggling, um, you reach out for help and hopefully they will understand. How easy is it to fit in at Oxford? I think um, it depends, it takes time, but it can definitely happen. Um, like, I did feel a bit uh, weird when, when I came for interviews and people were just talking about how they did Latin for A-levels, which was such a foreign thing to me, um, stuff like that. And then in, you know, after Freshers' Week, everyone was just going clubbing together every week. and like the whole batch and I didn't join them but I mean obviously I wasn't the only one who didn't join them I just it's just not really my thing um, at times like that I do feel left out but I do get along with them like when we have lunch together in hall um, communal activities that don't really involve drinking or clubbing are very useful for you to get to know your batch mates and your college will make an effort um, to ensure that you will be able to find people who are similar to you in terms of interests and lifestyle so eventually you will fit in even if you struggle at first. So formals are formal dinners that happen in um, Oxford College's dining halls. Um, I know we had one in Freshers Week that was a compulsory one but afterwards it's just like voluntary. So my college has formals literally like six times a week while some other colleges only have it once a week. It depends on your college. Um, I know I dreaded my first formal because I've never been to like a fine dining kind of thing before like I didn't know how to use all the cutlery it's really embarrassing oh my gosh like you know I'm being surrounded by all these like fancy people in this really fancy hall but apparently like um, the girl I sat beside with was really helpful she taught me how to do it like the procedure and stuff like you know how to hold the cutlery properly I'm embarrassed to admit that I didn't know until I came to Oxford but afterwards it became a really like you know I didn't dread it or don't like or find it you know um, stressful I actually started to enjoy formals a lot more afterwards so I think I go to formal sometimes like um, once every two weeks because the food is genuinely nice um, you get to sit in the hall and listen to them like chanting in Latin and wear fancy clothes and eat like really nice food it's just a very um, Oxford experience So my favourite library to work in is the Radcliffe camera, sounds cliche but it's true but I think um, it's just that whole vibe of being in this dome shaped library that's like the heart, like the iconic image of Oxford or whatever it is. 
um, also because it's really near my college, literally just like a two minute walk. And also because the history faculty library is right underground. So underneath the Radcliffe camera, um, there is the Gladstone link, which is the history faculty library. And like literally all the books I need are in the Radcliffe camera or underneath it. And the view from the camera is wonderful. Um, you know, to walk there, you need to get past tourists and stuff. And it just makes you feel like, wow, I am at Oxford, like I'm studying in Oxford, like in this beautiful library, I'm surrounded by beautiful people and I have all these ancient books around me and it just gives you so much of like energy to do your work and you just feel so inspired. <laughs> Is Oxford worth it? I am not entirely sure how to answer this question myself because it's still something I think about on a constant basis, sometimes even every day when, you know, when it just gets so intense and really stressful and whatnot. Because I do have fears about like, what am I supposed to do once I graduate? Like, what if I don't get a job? What if like, I get a job, but it's just something that I don't like? And, you know, all these things that are like, beyond my control. Um, but I start asking myself if I think I would be happy um, anywhere else and the honest answer is I don't think so because I think like the opportunities I have to pursue my interests at Oxford is genuinely unparalleled like to be surrounded by brilliant minds all the time um, to have the opportunity to discuss your ideas with your tutors in a really engaging um, environment, to have access to all these academic materials, to be surrounded by people who constantly push you to make you better every day is not something you can get like, you know, everywhere. It is not exclusive to Oxford necessarily, but it is something that I feel is a very intensified experience. Um, at Oxford, so that to me is what makes it worth it 